Hi, in this video I want to make, um, talk about the subject of psychological pain, fear, more significant than say, I guess, um, you know, fear of death, fear of anything, suffering, any kind of psychological pain, um, and generally speaking, fear, and how our fear controls us, and how our fear of death can, in many circumstances, control the decisions we make, and how we make those decisions, and our opinions, and our delusions that we choose to follow, or denial that we choose to have based on that fear, that irrational fear, may it be, of anything's irrational if you're not at least following the logic or the truth of existence. If you're ignoring the facts or you're not going along logically for what makes sense, your fear means nothing if it doesn't exist. Even if you're experiencing the real pain, that's only the effect of you experiencing a delusion which causing you to not, um, causing you to not accept the truth. So, you know, in many cases, our fear does control us. That's the main deterrent is fear. Um, expectation, nervousness, those kinds of feelings are main deterrents. And we know just how controlling those things are. And I think that's really the main deterrents is those fears. Um, those, um, obviously, we have things called motivations. Um, but our fears, in many cases, control us more than anything. Um, we have motivations to get something done. But like I mentioned, our motivations are to get us out of a negative to begin with. And that's where our motivation has very little meaning in the fact that it has an effect. Um, it has some meaning. It means something because it's relatively moving us out of a more or less, you know, anticipation, motivation. Those things are motivating us towards something that's closer to a positive. But that doesn't change the fact that it's going based on a relative position that was greater and the greater negative to get you closer to a zero, which is just a lesser negative. So it doesn't mean anything much in the end. And our fears are the things that constantly keep pushing us down. Our expectations of fear, nervousness, negative feelings, um, fears of death, um, any kind of negative feeling such as that is something that can be very controlling. Um, like I've mentioned, I used an example in my notes is fear of death um, and how it's stronger than most pain. And that's why in many cases people lie to themselves. Um, fear of death, uh, fear of anything, fear of not, you know, fear of going insane say, suffering um, anxiety or whatever it is, um, you know, not necessarily a fear of going insane, but you're going insane, and that can be painful, or whatever it is, you're going completely insane, you have nothing but the blank space of your mind to rely on, you stare, you start shaking, you fear you're insane, or are you just insane, and it's very painful. Either way, it's a fear, and it's a negative, it's a, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say it's a deterrent, but it's a negative that we're experiencing. And it's something that we, um, it's, it's the way that we experience and um, in many cases we have to go through those fears to have those motivations. And I guess in many cases that's where motivations come from. You no longer have your fear of um, going to the doctor's office anymore. Now your motivation sets in and now you're ready to satisfy your hunger. I can't wait to go to this place to eat. And then you eat, and then you're right back to where you started. You're right going, you're right back to filling up that that gauge of um, the gauge of hunger again, of satisfaction. So yes, <coughs> desire, satisfaction is the death of desire in many cases. Yes, um, obviously, I mean you get satisfied, and you're no longer really hungry for anything except maybe a nap. I guess you're never really not desired. You're always desiring something because you're always on to the next chase game. In many cases, if you have nothing really, something that's going to get you in the positive, you're just going to try your best to maintain where you are by not going insane. So if you have nothing else going for you, you have no other motivation, you're going to be desiring not going completely batshit nuts if you're sitting there and just thinking or something. If you have nothing else going for you, you want to take a nap, then you take a nap. But if you have nothing else going for you, okay, now my desire is not to go insane. So let's try to maintain where I am right now. So that's where it is. It's either maintaining or let's get a little closer to the negative where you're falling. And falling is the biggest process in all those things. Um, it's the longest, most drawn out for a little momentary speck of, um, a speck of time of satisfaction that we may gleam out of this process of the, the desire mechanism that's controlling us. And that's the desire mechanism that we're controlled by. You feel like you're trapped in your own skin because this is the thing that's giving your, des your desires a skin, this body, these organs, these things that are allowing you to experience sentience. And even though it's powerful, it's a powerful that we that didn't need to exist. It's something that wasn't very 
it existed in the negative, and that's the power. That, that, that's where the power comes from, is the negative that, it, that you get out of it. It's the zero-sum game kind of idea. So, uh, yeah. So I guess I want to go a little, talk a little bit on more on the subject of um, how our psychological fears and irrational fears obviously our insecurities and all those things are very controlling um, our fears are very controlling because it's all about are we going to do this or am I too scared to do this our fears control us more than our motivations because our motivations are controlling us only, only to avoid a negative our fears control us to avoid negatives now at least the implication of a negative that we may experience um, and even though our motivations I mean, yeah, it's just about the zero-sum game. Our motivations control us, but it's only to avoid and, and to get to a lesser negative. But it relies on the fact that it's only, you're relying on the negative that you're, um, it's the fact that you're in a negative. That makes the, um, and it still exists as a relative position. But it's the fact that it's in a negative that makes the zero-sum game. And so, yes, our psychological pain, our fear, uh, like, our, like I mentioned before, our psychology is the only thing we have, our point of view, otherwise you're dead. But the point of view of you and someone else is no different because all you take is that one feeling, put it in someone else, they'd be feeling the exact same thing. It's the feeling, more or less pain. Um, and just put it into someone else and they're feeling the exact same thing. It's not as if they're incapable, incapable, they're capable of feeling. Just put the feeling you're having in someone else and it'd be the exact same. Um, but that doesn't exist. Um, there's a reasonable way of understanding but it's still the idea, it's more or less pain. Um, and generally speaking, the pain is the same. We have a headache, we can understand that a headache's a headache. And the headache can be the exact same with someone else. It can be a little more, a little less, but the fact is it's still a headache. And you have the same symptom or not the same symptom, it doesn't matter. It's a symptom, and if you had the exact same symptom as them, you'd be feeling the exact same thing as them. But obviously we can't make those value judgments because we'll never really know. And that's why we have to say that this person is the exact same as this person if they both have cancer of this or that we have to weigh the specifics of each individual circumstance as opposed to necessarily knowing how much pain a person may be going in even though that may be um, something we can understand we'll never necessarily know be able to put a number on it I guess that's a way of putting it we can understand we can compare and say oh, obviously this person's going through more pain but knowing the exact value judgment that you're making is not something that you'll necessarily know, or the exact amount of pain, if you want to put a number to it, is something you'll never necessarily know. But if a person's eating ice cream, another person's in a hospital bed suffering from um, some kind of cancer, then yes, it's going to be obvious in different circumstances, unless, you know, a person just using those specific circumstances, eating ice cream, cancer, um, or whatever you know, negative circumstance you're going to be thinking of. You stubbed your toe, you had a lick of ice cream, um, and then which one was more satisfying? I think we can both say we know which one was better. But I've mentioned this before that, you know, the more you view your positives is very meaningless and all of this is chasing a um, a lesser negative. It makes um, your positives really seem all that, I mean, seem very empty. And it's a perceptual change. You don't really feel as satisfied once you realize just how empty they are because you're not really doing anything but satisfying a desire that you had based on the desire the fact that you were given the desire to begin with so the lack of desire means no satisfaction no satisfaction means there was no desire and that generally speaking if you have to rely on satisfaction and desire it's better, better to have um, I would just say none of them <laughs> and that's where the idea of um, the zero-sum game comes from and the idea of um, just ending the game as a whole, as peacefully as possible. Um, so, um, yes, our fears control us, fear of death, and how many people use evasions to avoid the fact that um, over exaggerations, uh, manipulating arguments, manipulating ideas, and using it against people, and having the fact that they're scared of something. In many cases, people that believe in religion may believe something delusionally and actually believe it, but it was because they were so scared rationally speaking, or they wanted to use it so much that they end up ending up believing it. Just because they use it to their advantage doesn't mean they necessarily don't believe it. It just means that that's the way in which they got to believe it is the fact that they were either irrationally fearful or wanted to use it to their advantage. And that's how the game works. <laughs>
um, but they also may not believe it at all and that's me, me using it for either one of those things so um, you know the advantage or the um, fear but if your fear controls you in many cases and even if you don't react necessarily to your fear um, if the fear that you had comes true that's obviously going to have an effect on you um, but I'm talking about the fact that the fear existing in the first place controls you more. You know, if you forget the pain or the fear, then obviously the fear doesn't exist. But the fear controls you more than, say, a motivation, because it's more overt, like the two steps I mentioned. The fear is more like a one step right to the point as opposed to um, satisfaction. You're satisfying something to not feel bad. So that's the two steps. And you're just avoiding a fear outright, so you're automatically just avoiding the fear, and that's just one step. So avoiding a fear is one step. You get to the point immediately, so it means more. As opposed to you eating, I'm satisfied, I'm motivated to eat, I can't wait. But it's to do it so that you don't, you know, feel like you've missed something or you've, you want to make sure you eat so you don't go hungry or starve to death. So it takes two steps. You want to, you get a motivation to do it, therefore you avoid something negative as opposed to just fearing something and avoiding something negative that way. Um, and it's an immediate step right there. It's the one step, one giant step, and as opposed to the small steps. Um, Sort of like the one giant step for mankind as a whole, as opposed to in the smaller steps, say two smaller steps for um, me or someone else or some you know individual. Um, so I guess that's a good way of picturing it. So yes, um, let's make sure I gleam as much as I can out of this statement. Psychological pain, fear, more significant pain. So yes, I guess another thing I want to say is these, these fears will make us avoid, um, you know, endure any a number of things. I guess that's maybe the main reason I may mention this topic is our fear of death and fear of any of these kinds of things is because um, we can fear death so much that we'll end up wanting to live more. It almost in a way delusionally make us, makes us think hope. There's another day tomorrow. Let's see if it changes. There's always a chance that something good may happen. This constant uh, drive of hope or some kind of expectation of something happening different. It's usually a fear of death, at least subconsciously speaking. There's a fear of death, fearing the decision to end all decisions. If you um, say like killing yourself or dying or fearing or irrationally continuing to want to live even though you know your game is over because you have a say a terminal illness and there's no way to cure it so you're kind of just screwed. Um, they'll stay in denial. In fear of death, they'll rather be in denial than say just face it. Facing it in many cases is a better solution. <laughs> because at least if you face it, you get it out of the way and now you're right there as opposed to living in denial and a constant on the edge where you may constantly be fighting that. Just accept bad memories, accept bad experiences, and move on with it. Sink, marinate in it, and let it go to the past. Because once you've marinated in it, it's no longer a bad um, experience. And that's the bad part, but that's the thing that makes us feel. The feeling comes from these, generally speaking, neg negative experiences or the things that we're trying to do to avoid these negative experiences. But it's better to do the things to avoid a negative experience than to do the things that, um, than to experience a negative, just to feel satisfied. So it's better to stay right where you are as opposed to feeling like crap just to feel good. So don't, you know, don't punch yourself in the face to feel good once your face is no longer is being punched. Just stay there and don't punch yourself in the face. Avoid as much as you can. It's about avoiding the negative more than it is about um, um, gaining a positive or getting what you want. Sort of like it's better to um, save the person suffering a sickness or an illness as opposed to you going to the theme park tonight or today or whatever it is to get your satisfaction. It's more, it means something more is it exists. Um, is to avoid a pain as opposed to get your pleasure because your pleasure is just to avoid um, another pain you're just reaching your want to avoid a pain to just before you reach your next satisfaction why the end goal in all this in satisfaction is just to avoid negative and it takes avoiding a greater negative by the direct fact that you're experiencing a negative immediately as opposed to doing something um, that's less overtly negative just to get satisfaction to avoid a negative so save the person generally speaking to get to the point that's suffering as opposed to satisfying your menial you know hunger for whatever it is that you're looking for your motivation means less than his elimination of pain or her um, elimination of pain it means much less like I mentioned it takes two to tango in that battle and it only takes one um, it takes two steps and it's one step in the circumstances generally speaking of course um, 
but yeah, I mean, the main point is fear of death can control us so much that we're willing to, um, obviously, unless it's so bad or it's a heat of the moment kind of thing, um, then yes, I think in many cases that can be um, very controlling, and that's why many people are willing to endure and that fear of death, that psychological fear, that our mind over matter, in many cases it works in the negative, but when you want to use it to your advantage, the mind over matter is very hard to take advantage of because it, it usually works automatically. Um, so yeah, the automatic fear of death controls you more automatically than say using it to your advantage to say um, win a competition by enduring more. But it's all about enduring in the end. You're either enduring more, you need to endure more to win as opposed to endure more to avoid dying. Um, um, to at least think that we're not going to die, think that you're not going to die, or um, use that as a way of comforting yourself. But living in the delusion is never the choice to make. Um, so, yeah, it can control you. So, yeah, prevent you from doing all sorts of things, mind over matter, um, not when you're wanting to win. You can try. Do your best, but ultimately it's going to come down to um, an automatic control of the function that the mind over matter usually works and the circumstance where it shouldn't necessarily work because it's just keeping you in the game. It works positively, but it doesn't work in the positive that you want it to work in. So your mind over matter, um, you want it to work, say, in a competition, but it doesn't work. But, you, <laughs> um, but it, mind over matter works automatically when, you say, you're avoiding death, but that fear of death is so painful, you don't want to experience it, but it's keeping in the game just to suffer more. For what reason? It doesn't serve any function, but to scare you and make you experience more just to die, have life kill you. And, you know, that your fear of death just makes, is just life's way of making it want, it's just life's function of finding a way to make it, you, it kill you, live, live, live as long as possible. It's our survival function. Um, so it doesn't work when we want it to work, and it works when we don't want it to work. It just, it just works in the opposite way. But it works. Um, I guess I'm trying to make a tongue twister here. This is kind of funny. So it works. Living in denial. Oh, whatever. Anyway, I think you got the point anyway, right? So if I have anything else to say on the subject, I'll mention it in another video. Um, sorry, I'm just getting tired. Anyway, thank you, and until next time, bye.